Welcome into the K0 LWC Ham Shack. Today, we're talking about the five things ham radio operators that are new to the hobby need to know. Now, before we get into that, I wanna let you know, this video is sponsored by Ham Radio Prep. Are you looking to upgrade your license or maybe you're studying for your technician's license right now? Make sure you check out hamradioprep.com. Ham Radio Prep has a proven study system. I use it, it's really fantastic. I recommend you check it out. Now, as we get into this video, I wanna talk about five things that are just like universal truths that a lot of people don't learn until they're into the hobby, maybe a year or two or five, but it would be great to know right on day one. Number one, find an Elmer. If you're not sure what an Elmer is, it's simple. Find someone that has a ton of experience and can help you avoid all those common pitfalls that they've already learned from in their own experience. How do you find them? Go to your local ham radio club if you have one. You're probably gonna find a ton of people and in that club, there'll be people that have different interests and different kinds of things in ham radio. Once you find someone that has kind of the same interests as you, just start asking them questions like crazy. Get their email address, get their call sign. Nine times out of 10, hams are always willing to help other hams in most instances. So take advantage of those Elmers when you can find them. Number two, uh, this one, interesting. Use your privileges. Uh, ham radio is way more than an HT and the repeaters in your area. In fact, repeaters at large have gone really quiet the last 10 to 20 years. Now, that's not the case in every city and every type of repeater system, but generally that is the trend. So I'm fearful that new hams come in, they buy an HT, and then they get on the repeater and then no one's there and they say, wow, well, this hobby sucks. I'm just gonna like put the radio in the corner and forget about it. There is so much more you can do even as a technician. You can do meteor scatter, bouncing your signal off of meteors that are coming during a meteor shower. Awesome. You could do moon bounce, EME. You could literally bounce your signal off the moon and back. Yes, I mean, how freaking cool is that? You can, of course, work low Earth orbit satellites or the International Space Station. Again, really has nothing to do with repeaters, but it is VHF and UHF. That awesome. Um, you can even operate on HF. You have privileges on phone or, you know, you know, talking on 10 meters, which is just above CB radio, 28 megahertz. Uh, you have, of course, privileges on six meters, 50 megahertz, uh, where you could talk across the country and across the world uh, when we have six meter openings. And you can even do Morse code or CW on 40 meters. Uh, now, of course, you're like, wait a minute, I'm just a technician. I don't know Morse code. True. But you can, of course, use a computer to kind of cheat where it can decode CW fairly reliably and also send it via the computer. So again, uh, it might not be true CW to some operators, but you can experiment and get hooked and see just how fun continuous wave can actually be. So what about number three? This one's interesting. It's plan ahead. That's number three. Uh, planning ahead, what does that mean? When you're planning ahead and buying your equipment, think about what you wanna maybe aspire to in the next one to three years. Don't just buy the cheapest option right now. And there's a lot of reasons for that. If you buy the cheapest antenna just to get on the air because you're excited and you really don't have a lot of knowledge, maybe just take a few extra months, do some research and buy the, the antenna that you really are gonna want six months or a year from now. Because someone said on Twitter, and I agree with this wholeheartedly, buy once, cry once. Otherwise, you're gonna be buying the same antenna or similar antennas one, two, three times over, uh, over a period of a couple years versus save up your money, get it once and be done with it. Same with coax. Coax is one of those things that you should just also have a little bit extra in the plan. I have an extra 20 or 30 feet of both of my runs of coax that come in through my panel and into my shack. Why? If I wanna raise my antenna up, if I wanna move my antenna at different orientation here across my property, I have some flexibility to move it around. I didn't engineer it for the way that I have it set up right now. I wanna have that flexibility in the future. And the same goes for my coax entry panel, how I get my coax into the house. Um, there's a copper plate in my box, and what I've done is I bought a box way bigger than I need. Why? Sure, it costs me more money, which is kind of a bummer up front, but now I have the ability to add a, uh, you know, a rotor in the future if I want for a hex beam that I'm gonna put up next year. Now I have the option to put another two or three other antennas up that are properly grounded with lightning arresters because I don't have to go then go, oh, wait a minute, ah, I can't put that up because I don't have room in my coax panel. I'm already set up for the future, and that's huge. Uh, let's talk a little bit of an offshoot out that. Let's call it 3A. 3A is, uh, understand that as much as these kind of things are fun, 
the, the screens, the radio, the microphone, those are all great. And that's what we actually use when we're on the air, right? But that's not the most important part of any ham radio station. The most important part, antenna and your coax. Don't skimp on the coax. Don't be afraid to spend money on coax. It's not fun to spend three times the money on essentially what's doing the exact same thing. But believe me, coax is a long-term investment and one that is always a good source of money. Same thing with your antenna. You can have a $5,000 radio and a $200 antenna and you're gonna have $200 performance. The antenna is really what dictates, the, dictates excuse me, the performance of your station, not the radio. The radio is a small piece of it, but if you're gonna spend money somewhere and blow some cash, spend it on the antenna. It makes such a massive difference. And since we're talking about antennas, let's talk about another rule to live by. We'll call it 3B. How high should my antenna be? I hear that question a lot from new hams. Whether we're talking VHF, UHF, HF antennas, the rule is simple, as high as you possibly can. Now, before the hams come in here and say, oh, what about takeoff angles and certain frequencies and wavelengths above the ground? Again, we're not talking about the details and specifics about propagation of antennas. For any new ham, as high as you possibly can. Can you do 20? Do 20. Can you go 50? Go 50. Can you go 100? Go 100 if you can. Uh, whatever you can do to get it up as high and as far away from instructions as you can, you're going to be in really good shape. Uh, higher is always better. As they say, height is might when it comes to our hobby. So whatever you can do is always a good thing. And now, not, we're not talking antennas now, but we're talking microphones. Don't be afraid of your microphone when you're a new ham. This is number four. Uh, I think a lot of times hams get a little gun shy. They get a little worried that they don't know the lingo. They don't know people on simplex or on the repeaters, uh, or wherever they're talking, and they're afraid to mess up. Don't be afraid. Jump in there, give your call sign, start talking to somebody, and then tell them, hey, I'm a new ham. As soon as you say I'm a new ham, it completely changes the dynamic of that conversation. And people will be glad to help you and provide tips and advice and talk to you. Um, so definitely just say, hey, I'm a new ham, and then you're fine. Like you got an instant hall pass. And lastly, we are now to number five on the list. Uh, now, if you can't find an Elmer, like we talked about in number one, what can you do? Maybe you live way out in the country and you don't live near Ham Radio Club. Well, um, the virtual Elmer is now here, and that is YouTube. YouTube is a great resource for finding tons of information on just about any radio, any mode, setting up radio, setting up antennas, getting ideas for your station. YouTube is just chock full of videos like this one that you can use to help get information. Now, not everything you see out there uh, on YouTube or on social media is gonna be good information, so keep that in mind. Uh, but it's a great place to source ideas and at least get a starting point. And there's tons of really good stuff out there as much as there's tons of not so good stuff as well. So if you're a current ham, did I miss anything? If I did, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think every new ham should know about. I'm curious to know what you think. Give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't, subscribe. I'll catch you again next time.